Yes, it's 3 o'clock. It's time for me again. Uh, my name is Joe Klein. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, social engineering engagement. Uh, I have letters after my name. Get over it. Um, a little bit of background on this. I'm in the process of writing a book. You guys are the first ones to see what the outline is. Woohoo! Um, one of the requests I have, if you have any stories that I can use, I have a list here in my card. If you want to like put your name down or grab my card, I'm trying to uh, grab ideas, stories, things like that um, for social engineering and some of the crazy stuff that you guys have done. Ah, name in the book. I'm going to put it in the uh, acknowledgments and then inner zone and things like that. So. Do you get a consulting fee for uh, for here? Oh, an insulting fee. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's get started. The agenda. First, uh, we're going to go through definitions, the process, what a pre-assessment looks like, uh, the assessment, post-assessment, some parting words, and some references in case you want to do this professionally. Um, I've been doing social engineering engagements for about 10 years. This is really the, okay, come on. Did anybody bring me a beer? Oh, man, you guys. Okay, definitions. Um, there's two definitions for social engineering. This is the one that three-letter organizations typically use and government officials typically use. Um, it's typically used as a pejorative term, kind of a put-down. Um, to describe the intent of effect of an authoritarian system on the government, basically persuading the individuals to think or do what they want them to do um, for the purpose of the government. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is a practice of what's referred to, this, there's a link here, conning people into revealing sensitive data. Um, it's basically it's a way of attacking systems that are protected by firewalls and other methods. I mean, you can't firewall people. And as the T-shirt uh, says from um, DEF CON last year, uh, social engineer because uh, there's no patch for stupidity. Okay. Um, one of the most famous is Kevin Mitnick. Well, he got caught. Why social engineering? Uh, Security is based on three things. You have people, you have process, and technology. A lot of times at this, these cons, at the security conferences, we talk about the technology. It's cool. The bits moving through the wires and how to stop them and block them and do cool stuff with them. It's very cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't typically deal with the processes an organization goes through that might have vulnerabilities and doesn't deal with the people issues. Um, social, en uh, yeah. social engineering identifies people and process problems, and there's a lot of them. Uh, the, it's also required by some laws and regulations. Is anybody involved in Sarbanes-Oxley? Have you done your... Um, yeah, I know you'd have. Um, yeah, Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, a lot of organizations are having social, um, social engineering engagements um, to provide due diligence and also justify security awareness. By the way, we're going to talk about some tricks on security awareness at the end of this, too. Okay, types of uh, social engineering that's done. The authoritative, the authority. I'm the president of this company. You need to give me this password now. Your job's on the line. That's one method. Um, linked, there's actually two categories. Hey, wow, so you went to Gainesville too? Wow, go Gators, yeah. Can I get your password? Okay. Um, another one is the interest in people. Wow, you are just so cool. By the way, this is used by a lot of women. We refer to this as a TENS attack. I know women out there, you've done this before and smiled about it too, haven't you all? Ha ha. Oh, I see somebody in the crowd smiling. Um, yes, this is, this is real typical. Uh, at DEF CON a few years ago, we noticed a external organization that another country that paid for some women to come by and 
ply themselves on some mails to gain access to their hard drives. Okay, this is done. Um, also, the um, appear to be helpful. This is a real fun one. Mitnick has used this real well. Oh wow, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to get this file. Oh, but you know, you find out that they they have a file size limitation sending email. Wow, that's easy. Let me show you how to use PKZip. This is great. It'll compress the files. These people love you after you use this technique because you're helping them. And also the, hey, man, can you do me a favor? I got to get this done. Okay, those are, those are some of the techniques. The last, um, last group is uh, this is my job and I do it. I'm the one that does it. This is the way we do this process as an example. Um, say that um, you found a process at an organization that handles money and credit cards and you call up and say, look, to a new employee, this is typically used against new employees, hey, this is the new process that's in place. I'm sorry they didn't educate you, but you need to fax all the credit cards to me. Okay, it works. Um, social validation um, from others uh, that are doing, wow, man, so you're part of the IT team at company ABC or whatever. Um, wow, yeah, I used to work for them. It's a really cool job. Do you know so-and-so? Oh, yeah. Can I have your password? <laughs> um, and also winning a prize. This is a real, f this is a real common one. Hey, this is Network Magazine. This has been used very successfully a lot recently, and it's very scary. Hey, this is Network Magazine. We want to interview your company. Could you do me a favor? Could you send me a network map so we can take a look at it and ask the right questions? Network map with your IP addresses and what else? What operating systems you're running and routers and protocols? Not real good. Or, hey, are you guys interested in an iMac? Okay, traits of a person that is typically social engineered. These are the traits that you have to teach people to be suspicious if they have any of these traits. Um, hey, man, it's not my job here let me give you the phone number. Let me give you the password. I don't want to deal with this. I don't know technology. You take care of this. Um, oh, wow. You mean you'll, you'll do something for me? Which is the next one. Wow, that's really... You'll email me some really cool stuff I need for my job? Okay, trusted relationships. That typically comes from, hey, I'm, I work for so-and-so, and they asked me to give you a call, and you know so-and-so, and that's another technique. Um, Moral duty, hey man, it's your responsibility to make sure I get your password. <laughs> uh, guilt, you will get that password. I will not get my job done. My kids will go hungry. All right. Um, identification, um, you know, who, hey, you know who I am. You, you've seen my face around. Um, desire to be helpful, hey man, you know, um, I'll help you out. Help desk is a real problem with this. Oh, yeah, we're here to help. I mean, half of our name is help. The other side's desk. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and also uh, cooperation. Yeah, I'll work with you. Some legal, legal obstacles. Yes, do not try this in a public space without a get out jail free card if you're doing it within a company. There are fraud laws that um, for misrepresentation and fraudulent purposes that you can go to jail from. That's, these are federals. Um, parting consent exceptions. Um, illegal interception of data. Hey, fax me that. Um, possession of illegal tools and devices, depending on what you're using. Okay, the process. Okay, here's what we do. We go through a pre-assessment, an assessment, and a post-assessment. Make sense? Uh, within the pre-assessment, we have get out of jail free card and contracts, definition of scope. By the way, does this look familiar to anybody that does regular consulting work? It's exactly the same process. Um, 
uh, crate cover story, that's actually new. Uh, approval methods, pre-work for, gr for gr the grind. Assessment during the job process, assessment documentation, reporting mitigation. Uh, we're going to talk about search, um, using security awareness for mitigation on this. Pre-assessment. Okay, the contract. Um, make sure you have the right person that's authorized to sign it. Okay? If the IT director is not authorized to sign such a document, do not agree to it. If some administrator calls you in to do that and they don't have the authority, do not sign it. Also, you need to define a time period for the assessment and a definition for the report card. Sometimes they're going in, hey, we want to be Sorbanes-Oxley, so we need this type of um, assessment. Or maybe they were broken in a specific way and they want to see how people responded to their security awareness program or whatever in the, um, that they've just run. Yes, get out jail free card. Um, make sure you get have a get out free, free bleh, jail free card. One of the things you want to do is you want to make sure you have a code word. That code word is typically recognized by management as that it's you that's doing it. It's not really a real bad guy that's doing it. Um, I have a tendency to use Chris Jones. Oh, oh, and it's so funny. The only time I've get, gotten caught this year. Of all the assessments I've done, I've done do dozens and dozens. Um, somebody actually walked up to the, the, um, where I was sitting and pushed me because they were joking around with me. And I lost my focus and forgot where I was in the script and literally said, hey, I'm going to have to call you back later and hung up. Well, she, she came running down the hall to security going, there's this guy by the name of Chris Jones, man. He was trying to get my password. Walked up and introduced myself. Hi, are you Chris Jones? No, I'm Joe Klein. What the? Anyway, we then describe what happened. Um, but uh, you want to have a code word so that management knows and security knows that it's you that's doing it. Um, prepare the documents. Um, Contact names, numbers, make sure that you have all their contact names and numbers if you get caught, depending on how much social engineering or what level of social engineering you're doing. Make sure you have those numbers, you have all the documents in hand, because nothing's worse than the guards or people standing there with guns and saying, ah, wow, we want to use you as a target. Um, make sure you have those in place. Okay, this is real small, but um, this just kind of gives you an idea of some of the scope of work that I've performed in the past and is, is doable. Physical. Um, uh, here's techniques that uh, I've used in the past. I'm the delivery guy. Hey, UPS. Joe PS. Oh, sorry. Um, or Joe X, yeah. Um, an employee walking in with a badge that looks just like the employee, but I'll put like somebody else's face on it. Um, being a vendor, hey, I'm your local Cisco guy. Um, you know, bribe, hey, five bucks, can I get in that door just so I can go get something? Um, telephony, basically external and internal. External is typically done from a hotel room if you're or wherever. Internal is typically the security officer sits you down at his desk and he goes, okay, do your job, and you sit there for an hour or two and go through the engagement. Also, internal voicemail, that's another scope. Do you know how many people put this really cool thing called their name on their voicemail? Do you know that when people are out, you know what else they do? They tell you who else to call. Mitnick used this real successfully. He talks about it in one of his books and several of his interviews. Um, he wanted to get a copy of the flip cell phone from Motorola. And what he did was he called the 800 number and said, hey, I want to find out who the engineering group is that had the, did this flip phone. And he said, okay, um, here's the number. He called into that number, and he got one of those wonderful voicemails. Hey, this is blank. Um, I'm out of town for a week, but here are my two contacts. Mitnick then called one contact and said, hey, your boss, blank, said to give you a call. I need a copy of that source code for review before you put it in production. 
oh, the file is too big. Let me teach you how to use zip. Okay. Um, so internal voicemail can be real problematic. Also, bad guys can use it as drop boxes for all kind of things. Um, mail and paper. My favorite one with mail is that I have a golf magazine with a Trojan in it that I send to executives because they, they are totally secure. And they open it up and they get one of those. It's an uh, advertisement um, that says that, hey, you know, you want to get a prize of a big Bertha. Every 25 people get this. Fill in this form. They double click and they start it and they get their big Bertha. Um, also, links and attachment. It's interesting how a lot of users will click on things. Uh, phishing is a good example. They'll see something that says, you know, www.theirbank.com, and it's really not theirbank.com. You look at the source code, and you find somebody's hex encoded an address in some foreign country. Um, also, attachments. That's uh, real common. Also, you have to define the levels of the scope. You know, how deep do you want me to go as far as doing the project itself? Do you want to um, find a specific target, or are you just looking for general information? Um, types of social engineering tax uh, that I typically perform fall under 104. That's a uh, plausible personal request, which the, a lot of those others fall into when you're calling them. Um, by just answering a few questions, you can win a prize. Um, using really interesting email, calling somebody says, hey, I just sent you some email. Can you click on that link? And <laughs> Or Trojan Horse, like I mentioned. Um, some of the limitations of the project are typically time. It's days on the project. Actually, in most cases, um, I did probably about an hour and a half to do typical social engineering engagement when you're actually sitting down to do the, the actual work. Most of the social engineering engagement is, is pre prepping time and report writing. Um, and then how many days on site, if they want you to do a physical, to walk around and see what you can get away with, um, that usually takes more time and money. And as a consultant, you definitely want to thank them for all the extra money they want to provide you. Uh, one of the things you've got to do is you've got to create a cover story. I typically create this one of two ways. Um, I create this either going out on Usenet News and other places to say, hey, wow, who are the security and the IT, um, who's the IT director? A lot of IT people will get real excited if, they're, if they get a call from, say, computer magazines or whatever, network magazines. They'll put all their information up. You know, who to call, what, what is my responsibility, blah, 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 blah. Maybe a couple pictures of them standing there next to their computers. Um, you can use that information as a to use as a cover story. Another is to have them provide a cover story. That's a lot easier. Um, who do you work for? That's always another question. Um, what do you do? Am I an IT professional? Am I a security guy? And my help desk and my third level support help desk that just got hired to call first level support and warn them of some problem and I need the password to blank. Okay. Approval methods. After you've written up your cover story and all your other documents, you then have to go through, well, you know that there's seven layers in the ISO model. There's actually two more. One is politics and money. Okay, you have to go through the political side and the money side. What you're going to find is that once they see some of these scripts, some of them are going to go, wait a second, we can't do that to our employees. Maybe their contract, their overseas, their labor unions, whatever. There's particular restrictions you're going to have to be sensitive uh, to. Others will say, yeah, cool, do it. This will be fun. Um, also, discuss with them the... the uh, political implications of uh, the different methods and the findings. Um, if you find that you called the CIO's secretary and not only did she send you this year's financials, um, but she also sent you the um, information specifically for all the salary upgrades, which, by the way, usually includes all Social Security numbers for the whole staff. 
Not good. Okay, now we get into the pre-work. Once you've done all that stuff, you get into the grind. Did anybody attend my presentation last year? Okay, those that didn't, go up on the Freaknik, take a look at the presentation. It talks about how to do grinding. It talks about how to find people, processes, how, how to chase people down, how to get details of discussions. Um, very good stuff. I'm not going to cover it because of the time that we have. But um, go check it out. It will teach you how to find stuff and people on the Internet. As an example, one company that um, had this Cisco router guy that he needed tech support for his Cisco router. Well, there's this really cool command called show tech support, uh, show tech hyphen support that actually hides all the passwords. He didn't know that command and posted his complete router configuration out on the net. That was actually a finding for one cu customer. Um, local lunch places, another place you can grind if you get approval. You actually go to the, wherever the local place is. Or you know that every, you pull satellite map, find a local place, and you spend a day there listening to what people have to say, and then you document what people are talking about outside. Um, and then um, telephone, making phone calls, calling the voicemail, checking to see what range, numbers, whatever is there. Okay, the assessment itself, this is real short, but it's really to the point. Um, when you're sitting there, know your story. Yeah, Chris Jones. Yeah, I work for IT. I'm one of the new security consultants. Um, my, my boss is John Jones. Yeah, he is the vice president. Yeah, it was great that he just got uh, promoted. Oh, how about those name sports team? What do you think? Know your cover story real well because you're going to need to know something about the locality typically. You know, if uh, you had a sports team win or you had a political issue or something occurred, you want to make sure you research that. Be confident um, and aggressive. Uh, worst enemy is to start stuttering going, uh, I'll get back to you, because then you get caught. Um, and always come across this, look, I'm trying to do my job. Let's move on. And also look the part. If you're doing a, a physical assessment, look the part. I had actually this particular notebook with a laptop underneath it was walking around a facility that I'd gotten into, and I saw this really cool posting that said, authorized people only. And I saw somebody walking into the door. And I went, ooh, that's pretty cool. I want to check that place out. And I stood there long enough to watch somebody come up. Well, I dropped my pen and went down to drop my pen, picked up the pen, and he pushed the door open. And I said, hey, man, hold that door for me. Let me write in. Look the part. Okay, documentation. Document everything. This is to protect you legally, that you didn't go outside the scope or the bounds of the engagement. This also provides the customer a lot of great information. Um, I usually put uh, date, time, location, what door that I came in or was able to get into, what guards I talked to, what people I talked to, all that kind of fun stuff. Whatever discussions that you had. Um, hey, Johnny, um, I'm, I'm from, you know, the uh, security department. Uh, Chris Jones having some problems with uh, some of the networks that you work on. Um, I think we've got somebody that's attacked one of your routers. Uh, do, you have the, do you have the time to talk to me about this? Um, oh, you do? Oh, super. Let me tell you what we're seeing at the firewall. We're seeing these kind of packets. Oh, you don't know about those? Oh, let me send you a link. Is it okay if I send you a link? Oh, great. Well, anyway, um, we think it's coming from this core router. Um, can I gain access to it so I can take care of something? Because I can just take care of it and fix the problem for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm busy. I'm heading home. I'm heading to lunch. I'm heading to whatever. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing. You then have to write all that information down. Uh, by the way, you can't record it. In some states, you have to have two people on the phone to be able to record a conversation. Legal. Um, and also, uh, achieve a goal. 
A lot of times the companies, when you're doing social enga uh, engineering engagements, they have specific things. We want to gain, give me a second, uh, we want to gain access to 75 passwords, or we want to gain access to the IP address, the domain name, the password for the user's system, and the admin's password. Or we want to see a file from inside the company. They're going to actually set these different things up for you. Um, you want to be able to show that you've achieved that goal, whatever that goal is. It's an example. If it's a physical assessment, you take a card and you say, oh, yeah, go take a look at server 4 that's in your data center. It's got my card on it. Sir? Faster, Mike, man. With uh, two-party consent for recording a phone conversation, mm -hmm. if you call into a call center, they immediately, while before you connect anyone, they notify you that you're being re you could be recorded. Correct. And both parties are aware of it. Does that give you the right to record it in addition to them recording it? Uh, you, you have to achieve, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't even play one on TV. Also, I may um, have to ask somebody on that one. If so, if you're in a state like Tennessee, which only has a single party, the law is really vague on whether or not you can record it, even if they're not. Wow, you could do the whole Phil Donahue thing. That was pretty cool. Yeah, you're right. Any other questions? Is this cool stuff? Yeah. Okay, the assessment. Um, you also have to be prepared for the inevitable because it does happen. You do sometimes get caught. There's actually levels of being caught. Let me describe those. First, you have the minor problem, which is usually comes up in uh, the tone of, and who did you say you worked for? Um, who did you, what did you say your name was? Can I get your phone number? Okay, you want to document that somebody asks those kind of questions. Typically, either uh, you were suspicious or um, you said something wrong or whatever. You want to document that. It usually shows that somebody is aware from a so, uh, security awareness standpoint. They're aware that people do this, and they may be questioning to validate who you are. Um, you also get, the, and usually by do what you do that, you give the name, you give the number real quick, and you say, okay, I only have about 20 minutes to do this. Can we continue, please? You're through. Um, the second phase is a stop. I've got something else to do. Can I get your number? Well, in some social engineering engagements, you actually are given an internal number, so it makes it real easy. Just make sure the voicemail box uh, name is changed. Another uh, way is to get permission to grab one of the voicemail boxes and have them call you back at the voicemail box. And then once you see that the, they've called you back even five, ten minutes, you then call them back and, hey, man, I just, I'm sorry I missed your call. <laughs> um, let's continue. And then the being discovered, which is the flag, the person jumping up and down going, hacker, 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 which is really cool. It's very animated. Um, at that point, typically, you work with the security officer. You've prepped him for these three inevitabilities. And you say, hey, when this does happen, we need to go into the office. We need to talk to this person. We need to say, great job. We need to, if you guys have some kind of award of being aware or whatever, get that person an award after I leave. But make sure that it stays confidential while I'm here finishing the security assessment, the assessment up. Um, that way they don't tell everybody and within an hour everybody's going, Hey, what's up, Joe Klein? You know, it doesn't work. kind of kills the whole thing. Oh, by the way, again, the, the actual process of doing this is typically an hour and a half to drive enough information to have passwords, system names, all kind of things. By the way, I do have one technique that I've been authorized only once to do. You guys want to hear it? Oh, this is real fun. Hi. I'm so-and-so from HR. I'm sorry. 
I'm not sure why this happened, but we received a death certificate from you. Okay, this is a real problem with our system. Okay, we have a p- policy that if a death certificate is mailed to us, that we take that and we stop your payroll check. We stop. We actually delete you from the database and we put you on another database. Your insurance is cut off, and you, you give them the whole list. And after either yelling, screaming, crying, whatever, you go, look, look, I can help you out here. Come on, you know what the punchline is, right? Can I get your social security number? What's your kid's name so I can add them to the insurance again? It's pretty scary, isn't it? Okay, this is actually one that I, when I'm doing um, engagements to teach people how to do social, uh, to how to do um, this, uh, assessments and the security awareness. This is one that I tell people, hey, watch out for this type. This is this really hits people emotionally and they go crazy on you. And they typically are so thankful when they're done, they don't call HR to confirm that you're really from HR. It's pretty scary. Okay, the post-assessment. Now we get into the reporting. Basically, the process and discovery, you have to repeat all your methodologies, all the people you talked to that was approved by legal, blah, 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 blah. Um, Your discovery documents. um, I actually put, I create two different reports, and I'll tell you why. This one's the one that goes to management to talk about what was discovered, how it was discovered, why it was discovered. This is the actual names of the people, their phone numbers, and all the detail. Why do we do that? Well, somebody, some of these companies are willing to fire or demote people for that. Do you want to be part of a lawsuit like that? Not I. Um, also, the EU, uh, European Union, has particular, particular laws that restrict this kind of privacy information. So you, I typically provide it as two documents. This one's actually encrypted and sealed, and they get the password, but they're requested not to use it or give it to their li- lawyer or whatever. But you need to be careful with that particular um, document. Mitigation. Here's the policies you then have to go through and discuss with them. Hiring policies. There was a story just recently of a well-known company that had hired somebody without doing a background check. They turned around and hacked the heck out of their servers, shut down the servers. The guy left uh, within two weeks. They did no background check. They never confirmed that the resume was correct. Remember yesterday when we talked about make sure stuff on your resume was correct? Um, An escort policy where people know how to implement it. Oh. You're coming to our company? Okay, I am responsible as the person that asked you to come in to walk you from place to place, to stand outside the restroom. Yeah, that's very uncomfortable, especially a guy and a girl. I mean, Anyway, um, you go through the whole process, um, walking them in, checking them in, walking them out, signing them out. A lot of companies are relaxed with this. Um, also, the vendor visitor. If you have a vendor or visitor that you're planning to have there, the guard desk needs to know it ahead of time and a policy for dealing with that. Um, In some cases, if this is DOD sites or uh, sites that are sensitive, you could have issues like uh, foreign national issues. So you've got to be careful there. Um, Badging policies. Wear people, having people wear badges. I walked around one site. Walked in the smoking lounge. They opened the door after I bummed a cigarette. I don't smoke, but I bummed a cigarette and sat there and chatted. They opened the door, and I walked in, okay, and walked around the facility with no badge. Nobody ever challenged me. Did it another time. I had a black woman's picture. I'm definitely not. Big fro. Anyway, um, make sure you have a badge. The other thing is not only a policy that they wear a badge, but where they wear a badge. Typically, people wear badges here. I'm sorry. How many people want to go, hey, how are you doing, John? (laughs) Okay, that's really uncomfortable. Um, Usually here with a, um, or on the collar, 
Uh, let's see, camera, camera phones and things like that, and a lot of organizations are no longer allowed. Um, uh, tailgating. Tailgating is coming in right behind somebody else. Remember I told you I dropped the pen and got up and walked in. That in secure, in secure sites, secure facilities, there is no tailgating. You basically pull the door shut after you. The next person signs in and comes through. Um, document handling and labeling. I didn't talk about dumpster diving. Oh, I did one. It was fun. Stood right outside the company at 5 o'clock. I waved to people as I was pulling stuff out of the trash. Nobody stopped me. <laughs> hey, what's up? Nice car. <laughs> Crazy. Um, document handling, what's classified, what's confidential, what's private, uh, those kind of uh, uh, handling type issues. Shredding, that yes, you do need to shred. Taking the the checks from your payroll that didn't get printed and throwing them in the trash is not a good idea. Um, discussions of confidential information outside the, the office. You don't typically want to have somebody say, hey, wow, let's go down to John's bar and talk about this classified new project we're trying to deal with. That's not good. You want to have a policy to discuss that. Uh, signing in and out of the buildings and signing into more secure areas. A lot of facilities have a sign-in, a sign-out sheet when you walk into the server room so that they have an audit trail of people coming in. Malware and Trojans, you need to make sure your virus protection, anti-Trojan, and your filters and things like that are in place. And lastly, unauthorized software. You shall not put unauthorized <laughs> golf software on your computer. Cousin. Yes. Okay, procedures. Make sure you have an incident handling plan. There's a lot of people, again, this is people in process. When a technology person gets a call on social engineering, they've been trained to deal with virus protection and somebody hacking into a system or defacing a system. You tell them about social engineering, they give you this look. Um, you have to make sure they're trained on dealing with these issues. You want to make sure that your telephone system, uh, your voicemail, all has logins and passwords, including the administrator, and that the administrative login for the administrator they put on there for their convenience has a login and a password, and it doesn't say, welcome to Audix, because then that tells the attacker that they're using Audix. Um, out, of mess out of office messages, their capabilities of only hearing out of office messages inside the company, not outside the company. Um, by the way, that's also true with um, filtering for email going out. How many of you just love around Christmas time when uh, I'm on lots of security lists? I think Gene and I have talked about this in the past. You're on a security list and somebody posts something and all of a sudden you get, Hi, this is Gene. I'm going to be out of the office for the next week. Contact so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so and they can take care of your problems. That kind of email needs to be stopped before it touches the Internet. Um, for your phones, allow DID. That's direct in dial. That way you have the phone number as it comes in. Uh, also control uh, long-distance services so that somebody can't bounce in and bounce, you bounce through your uh, system. Um, and then in this particular case, social engineer and say that they work for another company. Hi, I'm so-and-so from large blue company that makes large boxes. I want to I wanna sell you something. Here's my voicemail. Here's my voicemail. Get back to me, and we can talk about this great discount that we have going for you guys. You know, you want to make sure the voicemail is locked down. Email, again, the out of office, and also malware. Make sure that you're filtering malware at your proxies, at your firewalls. Use some of the technology that you have to stop some of this. Um, good security, uh, physical security. Physical security is just so important. A lot of IT people don't get involved because it's messy. It has to do with locks and stuff like that. Um, make sure that you turn around and... Please, no pictures. Um, make sure that they secure the outer doors. Make sure they do things like um, uh, have a time period that they lock. If they have an alarm system or a locking system, that the lock system actually works. 
You lo like at night, you know, all the doors are supposed to lock automatically for some companies. We'll do that. What happens if that locking system loses power? That would be a bad thing. Um, let's see. Inside, does the server room, is the server room secured? A lot of organizations, because they work in these um, multi-tenant type buildings, their server room typically is drop-down ceilings. That's not good. Yeah, I have hopped a drop-down ceiling or two to get into the data center. Um, marking sensitive documents. Again, teach people how to mark sensitive documents. Signage on all doors. This is confidential, no cameras, badges are required in this facility. Put it on all doors, including the doors that uh, you have for your vendors to come in and out. Um, and, and close the smoking lounge. My God, everybody has a smoking lounge. You know how easy it is to walk up and, hey, yo, What's up with heavy box that says heavy? You know you can get boxes from supermarkets that say heavy on them? And there's nothing in them? That confuses me. Anyway, um, you can have a box and walk up and say, hey, man, can I get a cigarette? Can I bum a cigarette? Yeah, okay, bum a cigarette. Oh, yeah, what do you think about? I got to get going, pick up the box. They'll let you right in. <laughs> Inside the box contains your laptop. Um... Make sure that that smoking lounge isn't closed. That's real important. Um, and also periodic audits. Have an auditor around um, to go through on a quarterly basis or at least um, once a year to make sure that uh, there is security at these facilities. Any questions thus far? Is anybody going, oh, my God, our company is screwed? <laughs> no, I don't want to see hands, please. <laughs> you in the back. Who did you work for? I'm no, just kidding. Yeah, I need a consultant. Um, next one is the security awareness program. This is so important. Remember I was talking about stupidity? Stupidity can be conquered for people just by educating them. It's incredible what they can learn. Um, your goals are to help them recognize the signs of an attacker. They want to, how to protect their data. Oh, I'm sorry. You said you were from HR. Um, can I call you right back? Can I get your phone number? Oh, who do you report to? Start asking those kind of questions and don't be bullied. Um, some security awareness classes, they give me enough time. If it's just focused on this, we actually have role play between people to try it just to see what it feels like. That way they can, when it ha really happens to them, they, they know how to stop it. And also who to contact. Hey, I just had this call. The number was so and so. I think they basically um, they've been trying to attack my information or try to gain access to the systems. Here's what they've asked me: have a report in place, have a reporting process in place. A lot of organizations, again, they have great IT incident handling, but you say social engineering, and they get real confused. Um, also, make it specific to the job classification. You notice IT is different. And I've actually got three classifications, because you typically have three type of attacks that occur. Help desk. Hi, I'm so-and-so. My laptop just crashed and I reloaded it. I can't get onto the network. How do I get onto the network? My VPN password got corrupted. Okay, teach the help desk to validate who that person is, call them back. Um, programmers. Programmers like to put back doors in systems, discuss typically the th issues like, oh, by the way, you know, <laughs> you can be held legally liable for this. If you put this back door and it's exploited, this would not be good. And, oh, by the way, it is not cool to give up your passwords to somebody outside the company or your code outside the company, kind of educate them on that. And system admins. System admins are great people. Well, most of them. Um, they just need to be taught that when a computer magazine of a well-known company name calls up and wants to interview them, don't just tell them everything. If they're the ones that are on the Who Is record, you know, don't just sit there and go, hey, let me give you my boss's name. Yeah, let me give you my, the company's name. Yeah, let me give you the secretary's name. You can refer to, refer to me. Yeah, that's fine. Um, teach them not to do those kind of things. 
Uh, management, they're a special critter unto themselves. You know they're above a lot of these policies. Until the golf magazine comes in, they suddenly realize the importance. Um, management needs to be taught why it's important and what to be careful of. Things like, um, okay, I did a real interesting project that was trying to prove that you can get into pretty much any party. All you have to do is look like you need to be there. And I got into a well-known database company that had just purchased another company, and I just walked in, and they said, hey, how's it going? I said, yeah, what's up? What's up? Do you work for the corporate office? Yeah, yeah. Introduced. I introduced. Um, Geez, where do you work? I'm from the Jacksonville office. Hour and a half later, we don't have a Jacksonville office. <laughs> I drank their beer. It was cool. Um, it, was, it was pretty funny. Um, other. Teach the other people in the company to be aware of these kind of things, not to give out their passwords. A real common, um, there's some posters out there. There's one common one which has a toothbrush. And it says, if you're going to share this, you can share your password. Do you guys share your toothbrush? Eh, I don't think so. Maybe you do because you're not here. You're down there. Yes, I'm talking to you, Pyro. Just messing with you, buddy. Um, make it fun. People get really bored. This security stuff makes them afraid, makes them scared. They go have, have bad dreams. Oh, you actually made it. Did my Red Bull make it? Ah, okay, I'm over it. Another case, darn it. Thanks, Nate. Um, make it fun. People like fun. They will remember information if they they laugh a lot about this information. Okay, um, post-assessment from the security awareness. Um, the message should be don't trust audio, don't trust calls coming in, and employees at all levels need to believe that they are part of security the overall security strategy of a company, um, that they're responsible for the assets, their password is exploited, that basically the investigation starts with them. That they need to be aware of this. And this is one of those cutesy things. I'm sorry I don't typically put cutesy in. But this is one of the cutesy thing all the security awareness people are doing. Security. You are it. Okay, you're all over it. That's about as punny as I can get. You know that. Okay, parting words. Any engagement, sign all contracts. I just saw a study that said that um, uh, the number one problem with people who do this kind of work is they forget to sign the contracts, and then it can be held legally liable, and things get nasty and messy, and lawyers get involved, and money gets traded, and it doesn't go into your pocket, and it's not good. Um, Over-communicate with a customer. I was mentioning this in the hall yesterday. Tell the customer, hi, here's what I'm going to do. Here's how I'm going to do it. Why you're doing the process. Tell them I'm at this phase. Actually put little numbers. They like numbers next to it or le letters. I'm at phase B. Um, go through, educate them, and then re-educate them at the end. Here's what was performed and here's what was found. Uh, make sure you have your get out of jail free card in your pocket. Um, make sure you have it with you if you're doing a physical engagement. Make sure you have it with you. People pointing guns have you have no sense of humor about that. It's not a very pleasant thing. Um, follow all the documentation. Document all your activities and have fun. This is cool stuff. Okay, references. All the same references. By the way, the talk that's on uh, neuro linguistic programming, I didn't mention that because I use that all the time at when we're on the engagement. Go and see that speech and you get to learn more about NLP and how it actually can be applied to here. Um, any questions? Did you guys have fun? Okay. Um, yes, and again, I'm trying to write a book. And I need some good stories. You've already heard a few of mine, but I'm looking for some other stories I can document so I can put your name down. This is a cool story. Or maybe you can submit anonymously. Um, so anybody that's interested, if you want to write your email address down, I'll drop you some email on when I'm going through the process and go through the different stories. And um, 
Cards are up here. Any questions? You all have a good evening.